welcome to the first episode of VR 180 Filmmaking Masterclass using Canon RF 5.2mm f2.8 L dual fisheye lens and the Canon R5 body. Today, we will go over everything you need for filming in VR 180. So if you are still waiting for your Canon dual fisheye lens in the mail and want to get a head start, this is the tutorial for you. We will cover what camera accessory you will need to shoot VR 180 with the Canon, some ways to solve the overheating issues, and ways to move your VR 180 camera without causing motion sickness in VR, like what you see right here using the Moser slide pad. This tutorial is based on two VR music videos I shot just last week, link right here. I would highly recommend watch them first with your Ocular Crest 2 VR headset to get an idea of what you are going to learn to create with the Canon RF 5.2mm f2.8 L dual fisheye lens. If you are ready, let's go! Let's go over what you will need to shoot a successful VR 180 videos. Screen grab this so you have a picture reference for what you will need to bring on set with you. The most important thing and probably the second thing you will need to buy after you get the dual fish lens here is a proper VR headset for review your footage and to show to your clients or talents. You will also need them for letting VR 180 video in Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. For most of you PSVR or PC VR folks, please do consider investing in a MetaQuest 2 right here. This is a must have for anyone filming in VR Metaverse. It is the most versatile VR headset for both on-set preview and editing. You also need it for color grading and final distribution onto Oculus TV. If you only get one VR headset, Get that. Here we have the HTC Vive Flow. I love this VR headset as it is just so stylish. I work with lots of female talents, for example, Ivy here. They tend to like the easy to wear stylish VR headset like the HTC Vive Flow. I am all about my talents and clients. Anything make them excited on set, meaning you get a better performance out of them. I also have the Pico Neo 3 right here, full review please check here. It is a great PC VR and Ocular Quest 2 hybrid and you can write this off as a company express as they are only selling two businesses. Next, we have audio devices. Not like traditional 2D video, you will need a ambisonic mic like the Zoom A3 VR right here. At least on Oculus TV, they expect you to deliver a truly immersive experience and 3D audio is half of the experience. If you only care about YouTube VR or personal use, get a shotgun microphone that is small enough like right here. So it will stick out when you mount it on top of your hot shoot or you will need some clamp and extend arm from UniZ to rig the mic behind the camera. Next, we have rigging equipment, not the Moser slide part here yet, I will get to that later. I'm talking about RRS rail and the Arcus Swift mounting place right here. It allows you to extend the camera beyond the tripod, so the tripod is not in frame anymore. You don't need RRS or Arcus Swift brand as they are usually really expensive, but you will need something similar. This double-sided clamp that designed for Arcus Swift style play allow you to quickly adjust the camera position on set, which is extremely helpful. When you are not shooting, you slide the camera system back in the center of the gravity to prevent uneven weight distribution. When you are ready to shoot, slide all the way to the tips. This kind of equipment is usually so well built if you keep the camera level. I will provide my gear list and some alternative lists to help you save money. Not everyone is a professional videographer, I get it. My goal is to get you started filming great VR 180 video to avoid frustration in post-production. Now let's talk about leveling. You might notice I keep emphasizing on how important to keep your camera level in 3D no matter what you shoot. You also notice Canon makes extra effort to save the camera leveling data from the R5 into the video container and use the data to help you calibrate in Premiere or in the Canon VR Utility app in post-production. 
Canon also knows how important to keep your camera level. But AI or camera meta is not always correct. It will help if you are using a bubbler like right here to pre-level before shooting, but it wouldn't help if you are handheld shooting or the level is way off. Inside Adobe Premiere, sometimes the horizontal correction will make things worse. For example, right here. I perfectly calibrate the leveling with the bubbler, but if you turn on horizontal correction, it actually make it not level anymore as you see. So don't rely on camera data to fix it in post. It does not work 100%. Also, there's no image stabilization when using the RF deal fisheye lens. This is not an Insta 260 EVO. So never ever handheld shoot VR 1D video. Put it on a tripod or a slide pod like right here. I also would recommend use a gimbal like the DJI Roland. But if you have to use a gimbal, here is a tutorial I would suggest you to watch first. Please don't be that guy or gal to make people hate VR. Think twice before you decide to move your VR 180 camera without internal stabilization. Here is how I level my Canon R5. I moved the Arcus Street Light double clamp all the way to the tip filming position right here. Turn on camera internal horizontal and vertical guiding system as a reference, but I don't really trust them. I trust my bubbler. Put it on top of the hot shoot and you will see even the camera internal guiding system telling you it is level, it is really not. Now meet my other very important VR camera gear. Three reels leveler from Nodo Ninja or this little off brand one right here. I would recommend Noto Ninja if you have the money as it is really accurate and heavy duty. I went cheap here with this little off brand. I will provide the Amazon link below. Get it, it saved my life in post so many times. Now look at the bubbler to adjust the three reel system until you achieve a perfect level. It is that easy. Now you are ready to shoot. If you shoot outdoor, you will also need ND filter to control your motion blur and shutter speed. Unfortunately, the final production version of the RF 5.2mm dual fisheye lens does not have an easy electronic ND filter system inside the lens. Instead, as you see right here, allow you to slip in a gelatin filter as an ND or color filter. So it will work but you need to cut the gelatin filter to the exact size. If not, you will create ghosting in your image. Also, these gelatin filters are sold separately. So if you know you are going to film outdoor the next day, prep your camera the day before with ND gelatin filters. Media. If you want to shoot Canon RAW or RAW Lite in AK VR 180, you will need a Fast CF Express B card. Please don't confuse with the Sony CF Express A card on your Sony Alpha 1 like I do. If you cannot get the footage out of the CF cards by just connecting the camera with the USB-C cable, meaning you will need a fast card reader as well. I know it is getting pretty expensive on all the gears, but you will need all of them to make the camera work correctly. What I would suggest though is not to shoot Canon RAW as Canon RAW cannot be stitched with the current Canon official plugin in Adobe Premiere or their own VR utility app. Shoot at all I, IPB or even IPB Lite to save storage. I shoot all three formats and find it virtually no differences between them. So I usually opt in IPB or IPB Lite to save storage space. If you are an editor, you may ask, wait, Hugh, Canon said all I will generate editor-friendly format to edit inside Premiere. Well, if this is not VR 180, then yes, AK or I is easier to edit. But a big but right here that Canon won't tell you is their Premiere plugin is not GPU accelerated. So preview and render will be extremely painfully slow. I have NVIDIA Titan RTX 3090 24 gig VRAM, SSD RAID, and the AMD Threadripper X3990. I need to wait almost 30 seconds for the next frame to show up. If you are on your little M1 MacBook Pro, there's no way you can even preview it while editing in OI or IPB. So you will need to render or transcode the whole thing out in Premiere as Apple ProRes just to bring it back inside Premiere for editing. 
By the way, the Canon plugin works on Adobe Media Encoder and even After Effects after being installed. So you can use Media Encoder to do a batch transcode render to save yourself some time. More on that in the editing part of this series. So I opt in using IPB instead of the OI to just save some storage space both on set and doing DIT. If we are only shooting an IPB, then we have a lot cheaper storage solution using SD card. Right here is a good example. The Lexa Professional 2000X 128GB memory card with 300MB per second read and write speed. If you don't like Lexa though, here is an approved list of SD cards to shoot at AK IPB, Canon recommended. One thing you need to be careful, when the first card is full, R5 will stop recording instead of continuing to roll onto the next card. So make sure your card is big enough. Another reason why to shoot on IPB instead of all I. This video is full of valuable tips and go nuggets, right? You want free chicken nuggets? If you like helpful video just like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and notification bell right here. After you get the chance to shoot with Canon R5 in 8K, you will quickly realize the overheat issue everyone is talking about. To solve this problem is very easy actually, using an external monitor like the Portkey BM5 WR right here, and then turn off your EVF and back monitor. Then your overheat issue will be gone. Using Portkey has another advantage, 25,000 nit brighter screen so you can see even in daylight. It has four colors to help you nail exposure and very accurate focus assist. I use it on my red Komodo all the time and I highly recommend it. Check the review right here. If you want to record externally as well, then get the Automo Ninja V Plus, which allows you to record 8K ProRes RAW on the Canon R5. It is not comparable with the Canon official Premiere plugin or the VR utility, so you will need to stitch inside Mystica VR or DaVinci Resolve Fusion, which I will explain it in the editing part of this tutorial series. Fusion is very easy to get dirty, dust can stick onto it and ruin your shot. So make sure you get a blower like this and a good lens pan. Clean your lens every time before you shoot. Okay, now we're gonna put everything in practice to teach you how to set up from start to finish with the Canon R5 with the dual fisheye lens right here. So first thing is make sure that you have media, right? So go ahead and put in the CF card first. Then put in the very fast SD card right here. And also make sure that you have battery, a fresh battery right here. Great. Don't put the lens cap off yet. Just keep it on. So first thing, maybe build the tripod. So we have a tripod system right here. You can have any tripod as well as a level head and bow head. I recommend have a central pole system so they can go up and down like that. Then you can crank up and down to adjust the height of the camera but that's not necessary. So first thing we're gonna do is we gotta put on a leveler right here. So it's the three real leveler, put it on top. And then the second thing to put on is the quick release system. For me, the quick release allow me to turn in a 360 degree so I can position the railing into any position I want. So go ahead, let's just go ahead and put the base in right here. And then on the top part of quick release, we're gonna put that into the RRS rail system. And I put it all the way, all the way to the end. So I have a ton of space in the front to put the camera on. So to go ahead and put it there right here. Right here, lock it. The good thing about the quick release system is it's so easy to put everything on it. And it's super solid right here, it's fully metal built. So now the top part is built. So now the second part is we wanna Record ambisonic audio, so I'm go ahead and gonna hook in the ambisonic microphone around right here. And then put the Zoom H3 VR. Around right here. And then, because this thing is really good, you can swing, you can swing on this side. So now make sure that this is pointing on the front so we capture the sound sphere correctly. So this is the sound system. The next thing we gotta do 
is I put the orchestra with play on the bottom of the camera now. Tie that in. Can you see it? Right here. All the Arca Swiss play is actually very cool. They have the, uh, you don't need to use a coin. If you don't need to, they have, a, uh, have the hex, hex uh, wrench place right here. What I mean, I can try, let me show you. I don't know what this is called, but on my car key, I have this like Allen wrench. You can go straight in here, the bottom. First, let's make sure align correctly. And then I can tie this whole thing up. Really tight. It was very convenient. So, right there. And then the Arca Swift double size railing system. I gotta put the camera in the other side. Gotta put the put it under the camera. Hold on, wrong side. Right here. So untie that. It's very tight, so I make sure that I can untie it all the way. Okay. So actually, I recommend that put it on the rail system first, and then to tie it up, and then put the camera on it. Tie it up. As you see right now, it's front heavy. The whole thing go down. So make sure everything's tight. Yeah, everything is pretty tight. Uh, it's because. It's too much weight on here. So it's okay. We just make sure they go ahead and go to the shooting position. Again, remember that it's VR 180, so everything inside the lens will be seen. So that's why, so this thing had to go all the way out. So the tripod, which is gotta not gonna be in frame. And also because I am on a quick release, uh, I'm on quick release place, I can untie this, turn it. This victory camera sit right between the two legs. So that so it's not inside, so the leg is not being seen in the camera. So now let's make sure that I'm fully tight. So now the magic come in. Use a leveler, put it right on top of the camera. And as you see, it's not level, it's front heavy. So I gotta use the tribute system to adjust the level. Hold it right here. Just give me some string, give me some like string. See the camera go up. Let me just turn it right to this side so you can see me what I'm doing. See right here? So look at the leveler right here and right here. They both have lev uh, leveling, leveler, but mostly look at here and then you turn it right here to make the bubble go into the centers. VR 180 is all about precise. So look at that. If you see the bubbler, it's actually going to center right now. Boom. So now it's perfectly centered. Again, the bubbler should put it on top of the hot suit right here. So make sure that that level is the camera level. So now the whole system is perfectly level and it's so extend, the camera will not capture a tripod leg. At this point, you can get off the lens cap. But before we shoot, very important, this giant fish eye lens, you need to make sure there's no dust, nothing on it. So use a lens cloth and file step blower to get rid of all the dust. So blows around the lens to get rid of all the dust. And then now the camera is ready to film. So turn the camera on. Adjust the focus. Usually, after I adjust the left and right focus with the iron wrench, I know that on my particular unit, when this thing pointing on the A of the cannon, that is a perfectly focused mark because mark it down. So every time I have just a perfect focus on a 1.5 meter distance. So we are ready to film. Now I gotta teach you how to set up motion with your cannon. R5 with the dual fish eye lens. Introducing Moza slide pod. I have the very old version of the slide pod. Uh, this is probably two years old. The new version is called slide pod Pro. Unfortunately, I don't have it, but any slide pod will work. So first, just put this on to my release system right here. Again, I still have my tri system here to keep leveling. 
put it on right here and then go straight in, tie it up. Slide pot is putting the weight in the center because this can go out, right? So it's putting the center of it. And then, like, make sure they're fully tight. And then we gonna put the camera on the slide pot right here, the slide pot. Ha also have this Arctic Swiss type of clay, but it comes with the slide pot. You don't need to buy anything extra. And right here, you gotta pull it on the camera. Now go ahead and put in, you don't need this box anymore. The side plot mount, untie this wheel, slap it all the way back, hold this button and go down like that. Now it's all the way. Go ahead and put it in, lock it. And now put this thing in, back in. So, okay, let's tighten up the plane right here. And also, see this slide pod actually turn like that because there is a control right here. So make sure it's dead in the center so the camera's level. So I will make sure everything is tight. Everything is tight first. Fully tight so it's not sliding around. And then untie this one. Oh, actually it's a good time now. Using a leveler, put it on top. So make sure that it's kind of in the center. Okay, after a couple of finesse things, we finally get it level. So now the slide pod is level, we don't need to charge it because I can't demo you if there's no power on the slide pod. Yeah, power bank. This is the Zen 2 power bank. <laughs> the camera's not on me. Oh my god. Kili. Okay, we'll just put this in. Charging, USB-C, great. Okay, so Zen 2 usually is fast charge, so let's actually go on the fast charge. So charging, see if you can power it on. Okay, green, it's on. Hit the plus icon. Go ahead and turn the camera on as well. Look at that. If you see the screen right here, this thing is slowly push in. And you want to keep it slow because in VR, when it is not about subtle movement, it's about slow movement so people are not getting sick because you're controlling their head right there. But this is their head. But that's why you want to be slow pushing and slow push out. And also, because of slide pod, I think in front of the lens, so nothing is actually going to be in the frame. So that's why we use slide pod but not regular slider. So that's how you move a VR 1D camera. So, Besides using the rail system and other really good alternative, probably cheaper as well, is this L bracket right here. It's L, this like vertical bracket, that's what I use to shoot over the head shot. And they have 238 right here on both sides. I'll just get the head off. You see both 38 right here and then one more 38 right here. And also have this like Arca Swift type of head. It's not Arca Swift actually, it's but Somia, but it's as good as Arca Swift. It's a lot cheaper too. So go ahead and put the 3A part on the top and then put this 3A part on your leveling head. Solid. And then from this forward, I can untie this part. It, it's really tight. Hold on a second. Untie it. And now you can freely move back and forth for the camera right here. So I'm go ahead and just go in the middle, tie that. And now I get the play from my other camera. So right here is the play and I put the play onto the base of my camera again. This is a really nice place. Uh, I actually gotta extend the screen first. The play gotta lock the camera vertically. So as you see right here, this is also gonna use the Allen wrench to tie it up. So I'll go ahead and tie up. That's it. Take the camera off for now. Just put it in. Tight right here. It's hard on the camera. And then by the way, you can loose this part up to turn the camera like so. So tie back, tie back in. 
And then you can turn the camera fully 360 degrees as well. This is a pan head. It's actually a panel head that can untie this. They can turn the camera with a degree right here. It's really convenient. But now you get yourself another setup of the VR one day setup that you don't see the leg, the tripod. Again, if you need to go a little bit forward, you can go ahead and do that. And then if you need a balance in any way, that means that the camera is too heavy now. See, the camera is way too heavy now. And, and the whole thing go down. You always have a sandbag. Let me show you. Have a sandbag and put it on the other end. Boom. The bound away. And now you can adjust level from here. Again, use a leveler right here to adjust level right here. And now you get a different set of system. Thank you for watching part one of this How to Film VR 180 Masterclass series. The knowledge I share here can also be used on any VR 180 camera system, not just Canon, but Canon does make things a lot easier now. In the next tutorial, we will teach you how to accurately and fast focus on the Canon RF 5.2mm f2.8 fisheye lens, as this is a manual focus lens. Then we will show you how to correctly set exposure in VR 180 video using Canon C Lock and C Lock 3 in Red 709 or Cinema Gamic to maximize dynamic range. Getting that cinematic look in VR now is possible with Canon Advanced Color Science, but you do need to learn the ins and outs of C-Log and C-Log 3 in VR 180 filmmaking. We will also be discussing correction LUT and technical LUT to supercharge your workflow. Then we will show you everything you need to know in VR 180 editing and post-production with the Canon Pay Premiere plugins and alternative solution to get even better stereo through the result with GPU acceleration. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you next time in the metaverse or see you at CES or NAB in person soon.